couple of pretty impressive goals tonight. We'll, we'll start with Anderson's uh, midfielder there. Have you seen him do that in training at all? What was your reaction to that one? Um, no, it was, again, really good awareness. I mean, a lot like Chicho earlier in the year, their eyes are always on the goal, strikers are. Um, and um, it defies all the tactics that we employed, you know, and, and that just goes to show the individual quality in that moment to really get us going. I think it was an important moment for the group. Um, having scored a lot of goals as of late. Um, and so I think obviously that brings confidence to the team, but also brings a lot of confidence to Anda. And then on the other side, the, the free kick goal from Ferreira, um, I think it caught everybody by surprise. What was your reaction to that one and kind of what went down there? Yeah, it's a learning moment. And again, I think, um, again, Ferreira is a very good player. Um, and again, another goal that is not coached. That's a goal where he sees an opportunity and takes advantage of it. And, you know, I think for us, the, 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 the learning from that, um, and, and, and you have to keep relearning uh, moments like this. And it's if you create a foul, stand in front of the ball until the referee asks you to move. Um, and then obviously for Gab, it's a big learning moment when, when you're setting up the wall. You've got to always have one eye on the ball and, and one eye on the wall. So a really good learning opportunity. I'm just grateful it just didn't cost us. And then lastly, i got to ask where the jacket's from. Um, this is the uh, RSL, I think, NASCAR edition. Um, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a terrible model uh, for this jacket, is what I've been told. I would highly disagree with that last statement. <laughs> you would rock it very well. I'm about ready to give it man of the match, for what it's worth. So. Uh, how, how badly does this team need the win after a pretty rough outing over the weekend to be able yeah. to bounce back and kind of show the real quality? Yeah, I, I've, you know, it's, it's a crazy game. And, and you think that when you're on the ascent that all things are going to be um, easy and flow. And then when you're on the descent, um, it feels like you can't put a performance together that's worthy of a result. And I think this is where we are in the season. And, um, you know, we had two areas of focus for this game is our repress and our defensive commitment. And ironically, we score three goals. And I preach this to the guys all the time. It's so counterintuitive to think if you defend well from the front that you're going to score a lot of goals. And it's, it's really because not only do you win the balls in better areas, not only are you engaged at all times, um, but it's the mentality that it brings when you commit to the defensive side of the game. And again, there's a lot of individual moments, as we saw tonight, in the attack. And, and that's what these guys do. They make great plays. But there's a reason why, um, and this has been said for probably as long as sports been around, that, that offense wins games and defense wins championships. Because defense requires selflessness from every player on the field, whether you're the nine and you're the goal scorer, or, you know, or, or you're the goalkeeper. You have to defend when you don't have the ball. And tonight, the guys up front did a fantastic job of, of making the, ball, the play predictable. Um, and, and, and again, for me, Dallas is a great attacking team. They have some real uh, firepower up front. And, and so we needed everyone to commit uh, to that side of the ball. And I believe that when we give that type of effort, we become not only a good defensive team, but a very good attacking team. And so that, this performance should be a standard for us as to making sure that uh, we don't take any defensive action for granted. Um, and, and more times than not, we'll find ourselves scoring some goals. What does the third goal mean to a 20-year-old who's come from a different continent to help create that goal? That looked like a, a pretty emotional response by him. Yeah, you know, I think, again, I, I think we fail to understand the uh, the enormity of the how difficult it is to come abroad when you're 21 years old and live in a different country on your own and acclimate to the, the, the societal norms, uh, to a club, to your teammates, uh, first time out of Poland, um, and obviously hasn't trained with us a lot, went back to Poland last week, just got back, and he is so hungry to be a great player. He's one of the most honest, hardworking players, um, but he has uh, an incredible amount of class. And I think on that play, um, you know, he took his touch down the line. He's, he knew what he was getting at. But what, what 
and just watching Dominic uh, before he came here was his decision making in and around goal. And uh, that ball that he played across for Ando was world class. Uh, I, I mean, it was inch perfect, the right pace. Um, and then he played another one at the top of the box. Um, so his decision making in and around goal is fantastic. And so for him to get the assist on that goal um, obviously brings confidence, a feeling of belonging. Um, I'm contributing to the team. Um, and I think that'll continue to grow as you get more and more playing time. Can you assess the goalkeeping in total? The <laughs> shot stopping, the decision making, the plays with the ball at the feet, just big picture. For Gavin? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's tough. A again, I, I think when we talk about players, and, and we're a club that um, pride themselves on giving young players opportunities. Um, and I think tonight, uh, Gavin learned a lot about himself. Um, you know, there was, mo there was hairy moments, and then there was big moments where he comes out for that save and, and smothers it. And so it's always trying to, to move the needle as to, you know, what I should be doing on this play. And, and, and again, training is it's a, it's a different game. You can mess up, and that's what training's for. And when you're a young player and you don't have experience, you're going to make mistakes because that's how you learn, unfortunately, in life. Um, and so I think it's important that, um, you know, and he does a great job of being a student of the game and going back and learning the recaps and stuff. But, you know, I, I think that's, that's part for parcel of, of being a young player. And, uh, you know, credit to the back line to, uh, to, you know, shore up quite a few plays. And, and again, Gavin made some plays tonight, um, some big plays. Um, so uh, I think patience is needed. Um, Unfortunately, we're coming down to the part of the season where it's it's go time, you know, and so it's just that it's always trying to find that balance. Um, but uh, I think the most important thing tonight for Gavin is that we got three points. With a couple guys suspended and some other guys resting with three games in eight days, can you assess some of the younger players that you played either out of position or in unusual combinations or both and how they did? Uh, like. You, you put Phillip at an outside back, uh -huh. for instance. The front four, that was an unusual group. Crooks hasn't started. I don't know how much he's played with the new guys with Lachlan out there. Yeah, again, um, so again, Phillip's played right back uh, a couple games. Um, uh, Lockie came into the first game as a, as a left-sided 10. Um, and, um, and then you have Ando and, and Dominic. I think the difference was the mindset and the willingness to, to work hard for the team tonight. It's not so much tactical. Because from a tactical perspective, um, even though uh, Dominic and, and, and Lockie are new, um, the most important thing for me is the way we approach the game. And then they obviously know the game model, and, and they're still learning it. But you can, in, in, in football, you, there's, there's two ways to affect the game, with intensity or with tactics. And if on the day, tactically or technically, you're not great, you can make up so much for it with intensity in, in the way you work. Um, and there's so many plays that these guys made, you know, Crooks in particular, who was just chasing balls down. He was an extra guy in the midfield when we didn't have the ball. And then he sprung Dominic and a few other guys in the attack. And so, again, I look at this more from a, a holistic perspective versus just individual players. Because at the end of the day, whoever's playing in those positions needs to work their tails off for the team. And when we do that, and when we've done that in the past, we're a great team. And there's been a lot of interruptions over the course of the season. Um, and like normal human beings, uh, sometimes uh, all this press from the media starts to affect the human being. And that is so normal. And so with all these changes, and, and then obviously with Andres going out, Chicho not being with the group for a while, it's, it's only natural. And so what I'm trying to do is making sure that it doesn't matter who steps on the field. These are the, the, the mandatory minimums that we have to display game in and game out. And I am so grateful that we got the three points tonight because the guys busted their tails, they worked hard for each other, and that's who we are as a team. Where does, <clears throat> where does that come from, though, if that's a change or if that's a – if that's something different that that they're not that they haven't been doing or that they have been struggling with, like where does that come from? Is there a player? Is there someone providing that leadership? Where is that coming? Well, from? it's got to come from me, right? I think 
you know, as, 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 as a coach, when, when things are going well, the last thing you want to do is stick your hands in, 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 in the pot. There's no need to, right? And so we're always, as coaches, kind of hurting the group. Sometimes it's tactically. Sometimes it's like we got to improve our technique. But with our group, it's been mentality. And there's relationships within the team. Um, you know, for example, Chicho and, and Andres Gomez, best buds. They've linked up for I don't know how many goals this year, close to 30 goals. And now Andres is gone. That's naturally going to have an effect on your psyche as a human being, not as a soccer player, as a human being, right? My best guy, my, my, the, the Robin to my Batman, right? And so naturally, he's going to feel a little bit like, wow, I got to rekindle with my group. Um, and then the actions of the player who's playing in there, which is going to be a new player, are different than what I used to do with Andres. Um, and, and then there's, like I said earlier, there's, there's been a lot of talk about individual brilliance on this team, and deservedly so. But that also has an effect on how, the way you think about it. And it's so easy in difficult times to start thinking about yourself. Leadership is easy when you're winning. Leadership is extremely difficult when there's adversity. And so for my chair, it's more about who are we? What's our mindset? And how do we get back, regardless of who the player is, to being a tough team to play against? Because when we play good defensively from the front, we have quality to kill teams. When we don't do that, we are an average team. Our superpower and what gives us a plus one on offense and a plus one on defense is our work rate and our commitment to the cause. Without that, we are average. And how do you get them to buy into that, though? Is, is it just a matter of winning? Is well, it just I, a, I think it's a, a game yeah. like tonight. Yeah. A game like tonight. Does speaks the, volumes. Do the penalties, because do, the, do the problems, do they play into that? Who's that? The penalties or the, you know, the mistakes or the no. sort of the downs? No, 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 I, no. I, I think what happens on the field is going to happen. Players are going to make mistakes. I encourage players to make mistakes because I want them playing from a place of freedom. If you say, don't do this and don't do that, they're, they're always going to play what you're saying, don't do it. And I'm saying, do it, express yourself, be brave. However, when we lose the ball, 11 dogs after it, 11 dogs after it. Now, if we're not good with the ball and we don't have 11 dogs after it, we are an average team. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. And, and so it's, it's really about and, and, and then when the players see this group of guys who haven't played together, to your point, DJ, who haven't trained a whole lot because we've only had a couple of days to train, go out and just do what's being asked, which is great reactions and great defensive mentality, we score three goals. That ain't tactics. That, that's, I care about this team. I want to be a part of it. And the team is greater than me. But all these other things that have happened are natural. It's not anybody's fault. It's not, it's just a natural uh, effect of getting a little bit high, high on our horse and then things aren't going well. And then it's like, well, I, you know, and everyone has egos. It's, and, 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 and professional athletes have to have an alter ego. They have to. Because for the amount of people in their lives that told them they couldn't do it, and if they believed every word that everyone says, they wouldn't be where they are today. And so that's the, that's the toughest thing in this, in, in, in the, from, from, from my chair, is you're important, but you're great when you work for the team. And, and how do you do that? Well, every guy needs something different. Some guy needs a hug. Some guy needs a video. Some guy needs a, a stiff conversation. It's different. And that's why, for me, coaching is all art. It's all art. And it's dealing with human beings. And it's understanding their plight, which is which is not easy. Um, so talk about while you talked today, did the team look like you wanted to look tonight? Yes. And my second question would be, with Ando having that great m moment at, uh, at this game, how are you as a coach determined to let him go for the tear or take him out like you did today? Well, there's uh, there's that, that's that's a really good question. You know, obviously, I, I'd love for him to get the third goal, um, without a shadow of a doubt. But I'm always balancing the team, because I, again, if I talk about we're a team, then my actions have to follow those words, right? My history with Ando at this club for the last whatever it's been four years, 
is when he plays a ton of minutes, he's always susceptible to a hamstring pull. And so thinking about Chicho's a little bit nicked up with his ankle, um, and just thinking about the next game. Meanwhile, his high speed running is off the charts, his sprinting is off the charts. And so putting all that together, it was, you know, I always felt coming in this game that we have to replace Ando at some point. Because if we don't have Ando and we don't have Chicho, then that's a that's a shame on me for not putting the team before, you know, him getting his third goal. Hey, Mecca, congrats on the victory. So there's been a noticeable lull in play over the past couple of games, but tonight seemed like a complete 180 turnaround. Yeah. What do you attribute to the improvement in play in tonight's success? Um, yeah, I think even before the game, Pablo said we just want to focus on two things, which was our reactions when we lose the ball and then defending as, defending as a team as well. And so I think... Today, we really just focus on those two things. And when we do that, that brings out the intensity and the energy that we want to play with. Um, and obviously, you saw it on the field. I think we got after the ball a lot, created a lot of chances. So we just want to carry that on uh, into Saturday as well against Portland. And what improvements would you like to see in the team building off of this momentum going into the Saturday's game against yeah, Portland? Yeah, I think more of the same of the reactions, the defending. I think we defended pretty well. Obviously, the goals we conceded were kind of weird, unlucky goals, obviously a handball and the first one, you know, we thought the the, the free kick was going to be on the whistle. But then other than that, I think we're just cleaning up some of the turnovers that we had. I think in the first half I had a couple as well. Um, just a little bit cleaner, more trying to play out uh, so we don't give other teams chances like that. I think if we do that and then play with the same intensity and like the reactions and how we defend, I think on any day we can beat any team in the league for sure and then hopefully get a, get a good run in the playoffs. We've seen a couple of goals from midfield from your from your teammates this year. Does that make you want to want to pull up from uh, from midfield? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's crazy. Chicho first, and then Ando. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> uh, so just like in general, I guess the three goals tonight from the offense. What was going well um, to be able to kind of turn around from last week's performance to to get those those three goals tonight? I think it, I think it started with how we how we defended and our reactions. Um, Pablo always says that as well, that the changes that we create, it's going to be from reactions and how we defend. And when we defend the right way and have the right reactions, it makes us more confident on the ball. Um, we're in the attacking, when we have good reactions as well, I think we're more likely to take risks in the attacking third because we know that if we lose it, you know, we have five, six guys around the ball that can repress. So I think we saw that today, just taking a little bit more risk in the attacking third, which created a lot of good chances. Um, could have had a couple more, so just more of that in the future as well. Um, last uh, last game, Pablo talked about like the quality on the ball wasn't there tonight. Do you feel like the quality was t there tonight? Um, I think the quality was better, but I also think um, uh, earlier in the season as well, I think the quality was even higher than it was today. So I think it's something that has progressed um, over these last you know three or four games. It wasn't it wasn't the best. So today was better, but I still think that it it can get even better. Hopefully, these next five games we continue to work on that. Continue to to build it up a little bit more. Is this, I guess, not to look too far into the future, but is this a team that uh, teams should fear for the playoffs to play against? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think, especially at home as well, with the the fans behind us and how we how we have gotten some really good results at home. I think uh, we're one of the teams that can can go all the way. So I think everyone in the locker room believes that. All of our coaches, all of the players, and that's what we we want to show in the future. Micah, you mentioned something I thought was interesting about the press and the repress, how that was a focus today. Pablo said something really intriguing where uh, he, he said the focus a lot coming off of Saturday's loss was on uh, defense and defending even from the front, from the number nine and backwards and whatnot. How does kind of that defensive mentality, I guess, lead to an outpouring of, you know, three goals on that like tonight? Mm -hmm. I think just Def defending and defense creates chances. You know, when we win the ball high up the field, we're obviously closer to the goal, um, can counterattack better. And so when we defend like that with that intensity, then the chances come. And as I said earlier, I think defending well uh, will lead to, to you to be more confident with the ball. Because you're, even though you're going to make mistakes, you can repress quickly. Um, you're more likely to make those passes in the attacking third, take those risks, create those chances. So everything starts with defending, as Pablo was saying. And uh, I think we saw it tonight as well. Emeka, can you talk about 
kind of the both the depth and the change of this squad over the last I don't know four six weeks and then you know what do you think goes through the the pivots and the defenders in Dallas when we bring Diogo and Diego off the bench with 30 yeah, minutes left yeah, yeah I think it's so much depth we have now obviously we lost a couple of players um Andres Oviedo Fidel but then brought in numerous numerous great players like Lachlan uh Dominic Diogo Gervain as well so I think <clears throat> when you have a squad of, of that depth, then I think at a, the 11 starters that start the game, obviously we're not going to play the whole 90. So you can really go all out for the 60, 65 minutes that you're on. And you know that the players that are coming on will change the game. They'll have a difference in it. They'll bring the intensity. So I think just having that added depth to, to us is a welcome sign, especially when we have three games a week, you know, play Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. Legs are going to get tired. Um, I think the way we want to play with the intensity, with how we press, how we repress, we want to have fresh legs. So having the ability to rotate a lot of different players and for all of them to also um, to keep the level up really, really high is something that's um, been good for these, these last two weeks, and it's been great to get all these new players in. Can you explain how you win the second ball so many times <laughs> off those goal kicks? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure I can tell you. I wish I could tell you how. I think it's just, it's a little bit of a feel, feeling thing, you know, um, kind of predicting where the ball is going to drop, reading the cues of, of the attackers, um, a little bit of a uh, physicality thing, you know, um, when it's having the right mentality to run the duels, the 50-50s. So I think just a combination of a little bit of feeling, um, physicality and things like that. Also, can you take me through one play? Usually you're pretty deep lying, but it, there was an opportunity tonight where you won a ball, and you were essentially the winger, and it was you and Ando. Yeah. Can you take us through what, what you were thinking there, what you wanted to do? Yeah, I was talking to Ando after that, too. He was saying to do a little slip, which I tried to do. But after I won it, and I was driving forward, I looked to the right, and I saw Ando. My legs were feeling a little bit tired, too. I'm not going to lie. But I tried to do a little slip to him, but then the defender blocked it. But I was able to get it back and then won the foul. So, But I was just trying to slip it around, uh, I think it was Farfan, I think the defender, so that Andrew could be through on goal, but the defender blocked it pretty well. All right, all good, perfect. Thank, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.